Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another card and video. I wanted to use this Mother's Day Tulips stamp set again because I love it. And I also wanted to use my Karen Pigment Deco Brush Markers again. I did a video a while ago using them and I will link to that one in like the end screen at the end of this video. So I'm starting off with some uh, Ranger matte black alcohol ink cardstock. This is a very unique kind of cardstock. It is meant to be used with alcohol inks, but you can use it for stamping and heat embossing and all those things. It's not like Yupo paper. Um, Yupo paper can melt if you apply too much heat to it. Um, I like it for using with these markers specifically because just, I don't know, the, the just the way this cardstock is, the markers sit really nice on it. That's the most technical explanation I can give. So anywho, I had it in my Misty. I used my anti-static powder tool and then I inked up this large image with Simon's clear embossing ink and then coated it with detail white embossing powder. And then after it was melted, I just used my cloth to wipe off a bunch of the anti-static powder off camera at the end i ended up going in with an eraser which i should have done before i even started coloring just a regular white eraser takes away all of the um anti-static powder but as usual hindsight so anywho right here this is real time not sped up at all i know i show the sped up version of my coloring in my videos because otherwise we would be here all day <laughs> my videos would be ridiculously long and I know some people like longer videos but also my computer can't handle processing such huge files as it is I've been having a lot of technical difficulties but anyway this is real time so I'm nowhere near as speedy as my videos make me look sometimes I wish I was <laughs> but as always coloring is therapeutic so I am using colors from the nature colors pack for all the greens and then for the petals, I was using the Nude Colors pack, but I don't think that's available at Simon. So I'll just link to the pastels. There's multiple packs available of these. And another option, because I know some people you don't want to like get into another coloring medium. Unlike me, who likes to have all the coloring mediums of all the things in all the colors. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to try this though. Um, what I'm going to re recommend trying is if you have distress oxide inks and see how, like some of the colors will show up quite nicely on black cardstock like this. Some, not as much, but like basically a pigment ink, because that's what you need. It needs to be a pigment so that it'll sit on top and not soak in like dye based inks. So the regular Karen brush markers that are meant for like watercoloring and whatnot, those will not work on this. Like... They will not show color um, because they're transparent. Same with regular distress inks, um, you know, regular water-based markers. If there's no pigments in them, they will not show up. So I did all my greenery first and then I did the petals and I basically just used kind of a light, a light peachy pink, a medium color, and then the darkest. And I worked lightest to darkest with this. And my biggest like struggle with these is trying to avoid the embossed lines because again, they're pigment. So they will sit on top of the heat embossing. And for me, that's always a struggle because I just, you guys have seen, I like my messy watercolor and slap and color on and all that sort of thing. But what I found with this that worked actually the best is because especially with the petals, I struggled not to cover areas with the markers is I just went in with my favorite white gel pen. This is the Jelly Roll 10, the same one I use when I'm adding little highlights and things with my Copic coloring. And I just went over the areas that I had covered with the marker. So I didn't need to trace the whole outline. I just went over and basically cleaned it up by just tracing over it with the white gel pen. That was perfect. That made this whole process much easier. And I will have to remember that next time I use these. So I don't stress so much about going over the lines that yeah you can just it's easier to do that I've tried before trying to like wipe off the embossing but because again these are pigment markers it doesn't just wipe off so quickly going over it with a gel pen perfect and then as always splatter <laughs> splatter makes everything better so I used uh saltwater taffy distress paint first 
because the color was just perfect. I wasn't aiming for saltwater taffy with this, but I am obsessed with this color and just spring and I don't know, it it just, I can't help myself. So I used saltwater taffy distress paint. I used white gouache and I also used perfect pearl powder mixed with a bit of water. So three types of splatter because, you know, if I, if I, you know, make a set of cards or like my last video didn't have any splatter. So then the next one ends up having like twice as much to make up for it. <laughs> uh, so added all my splatter. I let that dry completely. And then I trimmed it down a bit, set that aside. And then I did some die cutting with um, this new mom wafer die. This is the fancy mom. <laughs> and I die cut the words from a couple layers of white cardstock. And then the top layer I die cut from some of Simon's holographic cardstock. There's, it's a variety pack that has several different kinds. And I chose the, the speckled kind. That's like my favorite one. And it just, it kind of ties in with the, the shimmery perfect pearl splatter. So I die cut those letters and then I'm stacking them together with craft tacky glue. And then the outline I die cut from some tonic cardstock that I don't think is available anymore. I'll link to something somewhat similar. This was an older color. I think it's called bubblegum pink. It's a textured cardstock. But again, the color just happened to be perfect as I was flipping through my stash of um, specialty cardstocks. So I die cut the outline with that. And then after I stacked the sentiment with its layers to give it the dimension that I love, I'm going to adhere that to the outline. And it's all like stacked up and holographic. My camera always like freaks out a little bit with the hollow cardstock because it's so hard to film and photograph. It's so pretty in real life. But anyway, I did that. And then I also trimmed down a sentiment strip from one of the new packs, which my brain is blanking on at the moment, but I'll have a link to it. I will have a link to it. So I trimmed it down and then I colored it with one of my Copic markers. This is just the R20, like kind of my go-to. It's literally called blush, but my go-to blush color. And I had intended it for it to be lighter. And again, it ended up being like the it turning into the exact same shade as the cardstock, which was just a funny coincidence. So after I did that, I had also die cut a piece of that same cardstock with one of Honeybee's uh, scallop A7 wafer dies, the biggest one. So this is because this is going to be a five by seven card. I don't make this size very often. I prefer A2, but bigger images like this are so perfect for five by seven cards because they just fill it out so nicely. So I adhered my layers together and then I trimmed some uh, black foam squares into little strips so I can pop that little sentiment strip right below the die cut sentiment and once I've got those little um, foam pieces in place I can pop that into place and then that's going to finish off my card front so then for the card base I took Simon's heavyweight smooth white cardstock and I had cut it to seven inches by ten inches scoring it at five inches with my Teflon bone folder so this will be a side folding five by seven card. So once I have it scored and my card base is ready, I'm going to fold it inside out so that I have the inside of the card facing out to put into my Misty. And I'm gonna reposition this tulips image so it's gonna stamp nicely right along the edge of what will be the inside of the card. So I've got that repositioned and I'm gonna ink that up with saltwater taffy distress oxide ink of course <laughs> as is tradition so inked up the stamp with that ink I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card and then I left it for a couple minutes let it like fully dry and then uh, repositioned my card base against the edge of uh, the misty and then I'm going to line up a sentiment from the mother's day tulips stamp set so I'm going to line that up and then this I'm going to ink up with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink hence me repositioning the card base just in case I had to stamp it twice but it's stamped perfect the first time so it's just something so satisfying when that happens but anyway stamp that and again let those dry and then I'm going to adhere my card front to my card base as always 
like a broken record. You could always end here, but I'm going to add a little bit more bling. You know, I got the color and the splatter and all the fun stuff, but I also have these Studio Cadia uh, rose pink pearls that are, again, just the perfect color. It's like it was all meant to be. So I just put a few of those on here, not a ton. And once I was happy with the placement, I'm going to adhere these into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. And then once those are adhered, this card is complete. So I've got this color on black there. I don't know. There's something about it when you do images and then, you know, full color on black love. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. I'll link to that other video at the end of this one, as well as to my previous video using this stamp set because it's just lovely. And yeah, you can check that all out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.